Joe, Fairfield, Connecticut, the great WABC. Go. Hello, Mark. Um, I'd like to discuss this concept of federal government ownership. Um, first of all, we I see two economies. I see the the public or the federal government economy that says that there's a uh, seventeen trillion dollars in debt, and then there's the private economy. We're paying our taxes today. This uh, the uh, the private people, you know, everybody else. Um, the federal government owns. I, I read or saw thirty percent of all the land. In the United Pretty States, much, or even up to fifty percent. Now, it, it, owns, it owns about 30% of the continental United States. I mean, if we throw in Alaska and Hawaii, I mean, it would be much more. Yeah, I mean, that, that to me, that represents wealth. So how can, the federal, how can this government that owns the people's land, the Republic of the people, uh, be in debt? I mean, it's impossible. They have all that wealth. That they should share with the people. It's our well, plan. You, but, but, but you know why. You have assets, and if you don't liquidate or monetize, then you just have assets. Well, what about privatizing uh, those assets of the, the government, the federal government? I said at the opening, and I've, I've actually said on other shows many over the years, there's no reason the federal government should should be controlling 30% of the land in the, in the continental United States. And look at Alaska. They even broke a deal with Alaska on Anwar. Okay, you can drill in Anwar. Now they won't even let them drill in parts of Anwar. There's no reason the federal government should control all this, but... You know, we need to confront it, and the way we confront it is to elect people at the national level who are going to start talking about this and proposing this, and also through the uh, state convention process. So we have processes, but it's going to take a little while. Yeah, I yes, I agree, and I think that's that's the way to go. And the uh, thing the thing is, Joe, they always say, "Well, we're here to protect the land." No, they're not. They don't. They're not, they're not protecting anything. Do they protect the border? You know, Mark, uh, up here in Connecticut, I'd like to <clears throat> sort of connect to that in a way. Uh, there's a power plant in, in Bridgeport, PSENG. Uh, now, I found this out from several people besides Congressman Himes, that they are using coal that comes in from Indonesia. And uh, this freighter comes in once or twice a year, makes the trip, and is docked in the middle of the Long Island Sound and ships by little barges, coals into this huge. Why are they using that coal and not? We got so much domestic coal. Exactly. Well, what I found out is somebody that worked in there said that evidently this coal was supposed to be less sulfur than uh, Pennsylvania or West Virginia coal. But I, I also found that that's not true because the air actually got worse in Bridgeport, Connecticut, in the last five years. <clears throat> so he's been doing this, and Indonesia is a country that he lived in, I think, right? I mentioned this to several people to investigate it, and uh, no one seems to want to touch it. So here's a point where uh, the American citizens are losing. I, 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 I'll, I'll throw a theory out, which is uh, they're making it so difficult for us to to mine and produce the kind of coal that we need that it's, it may be cheaper to get it from one of these countries like Indonesia. Well, what happened also, I found out for someone that works in there and just retired, an engineer, they had it uh, originally five years ago. It was cheaper than American domestic coal. But then they raised the price three times, and they put this power plant out of business for a year and a half. It just started up again about a year ago with the same coal. And I have pictures of this freighter that comes in from Indonesia. It's yeah. amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Well, you know, we don't even need to ship any more oil from uh, from the Arabs if we don't want to. But because That's of our, 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 our hate America, hate capitalism, Hate the oil industry policies here. All this populist bullcrap. Uh, you know, we're making them wealthy uh, rather than creating jobs right here. Yeah, you, you, just a, a little change of subject too. Their technique. I was thinking about this as you were speaking with the gentleman from Florida. Uh, why does our, uh, our president go to Al Sharpton? I mean, I, I lived in the Bronx when Al Sharpton was uh, <laughs> running his things. Um, yeah, and about 412 pounds. Yes. <laughs> Well, it, they use this as power. It, it's it's material to go back to Mark. Material dialecticism. When they allow this uh, conflict between you said Marx, economic, right? Because people may Marx. not know that that's Marx. All right, go ahead. Absolutely. So Marx, material dialecticism. If you you want to maintain your power, you let the people fight each other. And if you they fight each other on on uh, on materialism, which is what Marx was about. It's not classical dialecticism, good and evil. It's material dialect, which is what their techniques are. They use that all the time. Uh, Holder uses it, who was uh, uh, was trained by probably Janet Reno and educated by her and Clinton. Uh, they use this all one the time. One minute. One minute. Yeah. I got one minute. 
Okay. Well, this is the, the technique, and they do this uh, throughout everything in America, the whole land to stop coal, uh, our uh, producing jobs for Americans. It's all about this, and, and it, it fooled so many people. So I, I like your, your way of approaching it and going after it. Uh, I don't have a law degree. I, I respect people that have uh, that ability to do that, and I think that's the way to go. Joe, you've called here before. You're, you're really solid, very, very knowledgeable. Keep at it, baby. We appreciate having you out there and calling. I really do.